Well, I want to say welcome to our Christmas online at Grace Fraternity Church. If you're with family today or if you're watching this by yourself, I'm just grateful that you are tuning in uh, because it's going to be a fantastic year. The end of the year is not something to take lightly because at the end of every year, God, I believe, is speaking to us uh, not only how to what he's done for this past year, but to encourage us what he's going to do for this next year. So I'll talk about it shortly, um, just about some hope that God has for you and I for how to overcome in this year. So there's so much that God's up to behind the scenes, and I think he's going to reveal some of this to you. Open this message up. I know it's Christmas. I believe that Jesus is going to be glorified through this message. And my heart is that you have to push pause on this video and that you have to seek Jesus for yourself. So let's just dive in. Isaiah, the prophet, is prophesying about Jesus coming to the earth. And he says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace. Sometimes when we think government, we think about the Republicans and the Democrats. And I want to encourage you that the government that Jesus has upon his shoulders is the dominion and the authority of the reign of Christ Jesus through the church. What that means is the kingdom of God does nothing without the body of Christ. I talked last week about how we are wrapped with our humanity is wrapped, wrapping the presence of God. In other words, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so God loves to wrap things in humanity, uh, loves to wrap the supernatural with the natural. So you think about Jesus coming to the earth, and they were expecting the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. They knew about this prophecy from 500 years ago, and yet they see a baby wrapped in clothing in a manger. And then again, as Jesus is being taken off the cross, they wrap him in grave clothes. And so it's like God has this, I don't want to say humor, but he is so wise in knowing that we can, he can wrap things in the natural, knowing that the supernatural is hidden inside. And so that's what he did with you and I, is he wrapped the Spirit of God inside of us, making us new creations. When we gave our life to Jesus, you became a new creation. So he took you out of the kingdom of darkness, brought you into his kingdom of light. You're now a child of God, and he's wrapped his presence inside of you. So Christmas time, we're opening up gifts, we're excited about it, but it just represents what God is excited about what's in us. He's excited about you and I and his love for us. Amen? So let's go back to a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. Now what is upon the shoulders? What does that even mean? Like government upon his shoulders. Well, I believe that Jesus is the head of the church. And so up on our shoulders is our head in the same way Christ is doing everything through the body of Christ. The Bible says that we are co-laborers with Christ Jesus. So his plan for you and I is to do nothing without us. Why? Because we're the hands and the feet of Jesus. He's the head, so we're listening to him. We're taking direction from him. We're taking his authority and his government. When you say, in the name of Jesus, what you're saying is that the authority that Jesus has, I'm an ambassador and I speak on his behalf. That's go, so good. So you can pray for someone and you can say in the name of Jesus and on behalf of Jesus, you're saying, let it be so. Let it be done. And so when we pray for healing, we're doing it as if Christ himself, the Spirit of God is there. So we're asking the Lord to take us into places. Maybe you're with family today. And maybe you're going to see co-workers or maybe you're going to see different people during the holidays, and the presence of God is going with you, and you then have authority to take with you, and that's how his government is upon his shoulders. He's, he's entrusting us to bring heaven on earth. 
It's the good news. And, and some of us don't like that he's entrusting us because we don't want responsibility. I'm, I'm being real right now. Sometimes I'm going, God, uh, uh, couldn't you pick someone else? Couldn't you have picked a better way to do this? Couldn't you have done it yourself? And I love how he loves to include us because he doesn't want to do it alone. He loves family. God loves family. He loves brothers and sisters and, and, and children gathering together. He loves the body of Christ being uh, together because we grow. When we're alone, we don't grow as easily. Uh, but when we're together, we grow. We have to grow in relationships. And that's important to him. So the government is upon his shoulder, not just because he has dominion, but because he's taken the responsibility as the head to enforce the kingdom of heaven upon the earth through the body of Christ. Okay? And then, he will be called wonderful. And, and that word in the English wonderful is uh, under underused, or, or let me say it this way. The word wonderful in English can be overused. So uh, my m wife may say, hey, listen, uh, your mother-in-law or your, your family, your in-laws are coming over. And I'll say, oh, wonderful. Well, in English, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot to us. But in the Hebrew, the word wonderful is a miracle. It, the word wonderful really means miraculous, the supernatural miracle that God's going to do. So when it says that uh, a son is given, his, his name shall be called wonderful, the English word doesn't, doesn't do it justice. But wonderful means there's a miracle that's happening. This is supernatural heaven coming to earth. And so they would have seen this word way more, um, um, you know, just exciting than the word wonderful. And then it uses the word counselor. So for Jesus, not only is he a miracle, he's the supernatural coming to earth, but he's the counselor. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you just didn't know how to, how to escape something that was, that was terrible about to happen. Um, I think of counselors. I was in a youth camp for, I, I had to be about 12 or 13 years old. We went to summer camp every year for the Texas Boys Choir. And in our dorm room, we had uh, an opportunity right above the door was a loft. And the counselor said, please don't go up there. You can hurt yourself. You know, nobody's supposed to be up there. It's too high up. And we thought it was funny to take tube socks and fill them with other socks and put shoes on the end and make it look like there was a child or a, another kid our age up there in the loft. And we told our counselor, a camp counselor, because there was one for our hallway, we said, there's a kid upstairs. He's in the loft and he won't come down. And it was the funniest thing because for about five minutes, uh, our camp counselor was arguing with this imaginary kid at the top of the loft to come down. And we laughed so hard. Uh, fortunately, the counselor thought it was funny. But when we hear the word counselor, we think of someone that's just going to listen to us. And, and I think sometimes um, we can take that word counselor and go, okay, well, God just wants to hear all our problems, which is true. He cares for us, and we can cast our, our cares or cast our burdens into him. I want you to understand that that word counselor is really a solution finder. So he's not just someone that we're, you know, like a cave where you just you, you shout into the cave and it echoes back what you're saying. That's not who Christ is for us. He's a solution or a problem finder or a problem solver. He's not just finding the problem. He's solving the problem. And so this counselor for us, which is Christ Jesus, no matter what circumstance you're going through, no matter even if you put yourself in the problem, maybe you were the problem that got you into that situation. I don't know about you, but I've been the problem that put me in a situation where I needed my Savior, my counselor, to give me wisdom on how to get myself out of the situation that I put myself in. And that's what that word counselor in the Hebrew means. It's a problem solver. It's not just someone that's listening, because he definitely listens. He cares for you and I. But he has a solution. He has wisdom of how to solve what needs to happen. All right, so 
Let's go back. Government upon his shoulders. He's called Wonderful, which is the miracle maker. He's the counselor, which is the, the problem solver. And then he's the mighty God. I love this part. The mighty God in the Hebrew means he's a powerful warrior. Meaning he's, he's strong and everlasting. He's, he, he's, he's almighty. This is, this is all about strength. And I think about the angels that were, were sp spoken to by the, uh, or excuse me, the shepherds that were spoken to by the angels. So the angels declare that Jesus has arrived in Bethlehem. And they were expecting this, this, this powerful warrior. And then they see this baby in a manger. Again, Jesus is all of God wrapped in all of humanity. And the shepherds would have been maybe taken back by what they saw, but they knew in their spirit that something was going on. And it's the same thing when you gave your life to Jesus. Maybe what you saw wasn't really you know, something supernatural as, as, as maybe the world would say, well, what... What, what really happened? Well, something on the inside you knew changed. You knew your life was now not yours, but it, it, it became God's. You knew something inside, spiritually. Your spirit became new. And so maybe you still had the same, uh, um, you know, we think about a, a teenager that, that, that has body odor, right? Well, when they give their life to Jesus, they still have body odor. Like, their physical didn't change. But you know something inside of you, your spirit changed. And so I just encourage you that this is the same thing that, that the Isaiah, the prophet, he said, he's mighty, he's strong. Uh, there's no one stronger than Jesus. And yet that strength, as we see in the Bible, he's walking around carrying that strength and, and he's so humble and so meek. He's carrying that strength where he could absolutely call angels to destroy his enemies especially when he's being beaten and his beard's being tore out and, and they're spitting on him. And yet, that's the kind of strength he carries that he loves them. And even on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the kind of strength that comes from heaven. So he's carrying the government upon his shoulders, the authority, He's the head of the church. He's wonderful, which is, he's a miracle. He's the counselor, which he's the problem solver. He's the mighty God, which he's all powerful and strength. And, and then he's the everlasting father. And everlasting father in Hebrew is masculine singular. Means it's a duration. Like it's not a, it's not a one-time thing. It's a, it's a continual, it's eternity. It's a eternal father. It's a, it's the long term. Talks about in Hebrew advance. Everlasting father advancing. He's not only advancing his kingdom, but he's advancing you and I. He's. He's looking, that's what fathers do as, a, as an everlasting father. He's, he's coming to the earth, to an earth full of orphans. That's just why they're so excited because in their spirit, they're all orphans. They're fatherless. And Jesus is coming as the everlasting father. Why is he everlasting? Because his sacrifice is enough. It's a one-time sacrifice that's everlasting so that we no longer have to be orphans, but we're called sons and daughters. <laughs> it's powerful. Everlasting Father. I remember the uh, everlasting gobstoppers. Did you know that you could actually get through an everlasting gobstopper? Uh, I remember as a kid, I would set it on the counter after sucking on it for hours, and, and eventually that thing began to wear down, and I got through it and chewed through it. And so it wasn't truly everlasting. But let me just explain this to you, that Jesus said, I don't lose any that the Father gives me. So his love is everlasting. 
His love is, He's not forsaking you. And when you need a miracle, Jesus is that for you. When you need a problem solved, Jesus is that for you. He's the counselor. When you need strength, when you need um, an almighty God, when you need this, this power that, 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 that you feel so weak, that's when His strength comes upon you, and that's who He is for you. And then He's the everlasting Father. When you feel like you have no one on your side, He's constantly advancing behind the scenes for your favor. He's constantly doing things for you because He's a loving Father for you. It says He's the everlasting Father. And then finally it says He's the Prince of Peace. The Hebrew word is shalom. Shalom. So a lot of people think peace is, well, it's the absence of problems. But that's not what peace means. In, in the Hebrew, peace means um, prosperity and, and health and finances in all the areas that obtain to life. It's not just one area of peace so that, so that I'm no longer inside of a trial. That's not what it is because Jesus said, peace I leave with you. And he's praying for the disciples that God wouldn't just remove them from the earth. That's not his heart for us. It's for us to carry the kingdom or the earth or the kingdom of heaven to the earth that God's presence and peace would be with them through the trials. That's his prayer for you and I. So you recognize him as the prince or the authority or the, the position of high authority over your prosperity, over your health. And when you know the will of the Father, which is your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's going on in heaven? Is there cancer in heaven? No cancer in heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? No sickness in heaven. And Jesus tells us how to pray, that we would pray on earth as it is in heaven, His will be done. His kingdom come and His will be done. But heaven's consequences were paid for by Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means you have a right standing with God that you can go to the Prince of Peace because Christ paid for you and I. He paid for our sins. And you and I can have an access through the blood of Jesus. We can have a relationship with Jesus. We can have a relationship with the miracle, with the counselor who has the answer to our problem. He has the strength to our weakness. He's, he's got his, the government on his shoulder, so he has the authority and he wants to run it through the body of Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. And so he, he knows how to bring prosperity. He knows how to advance us. He knows how to do all these things that we're talking about. Do you know this Jesus? And if there's an area where you don't know him, I hope by now you push pause and you've asked him to show you who he is for you in these areas. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Purified, purified by the hands of the healer. Heal the sickness and bring the God in Jesus.